What's going on YouTube? Kenny G here. I was headed up to the lake earlier today. I was going to record a time lapse video. If you don't know what that is, that is where you set your camera on a tripod and you set it to continuous, uh, not, not record, not record video, but continuous photo. And it takes a photograph after a photograph after a photograph. And, uh, and I'm talking hundreds. And in my case, I took, I took 1,638 photographs with my tripod and the camera sitting, you know, looking at the exact same spot. Put them into your photo editor and edit them. And I'm gonna show you that here in just a second. Edit them and then export, export them out put them into a video editor, and then you create a time lapse. And uh, I'm gonna show you how to do all that here in just a second. But, uh, but you gotta set your camera on continuous shoot. And what I did was I set my camera to record, to shoot raw photos. And I put a blank 64 gigabyte card in it. And I just let it go until the car got plumb full, which came out to 1,638 photographs. Now, um, most cameras can do this. I mean, some can't. The, the, this camera right here that I'm shooting on uh, can. My my other camera over here, my my B camera, is a M, uh, M100. It cannot do that. But this camera right here can. Uh, this camera is a Canon M6 Mark II. I had a 16 millimeter lens on it. The settings that I used were, it was a very bright and sunny day. So I used one four thousandth of a second. Um, F1.4, which is wide open for this, this lens. And ISO, uh, ISO was 100. And then I Got, and I set it on a tripod and let it do its thing. Um, it took almost an hour to take those photos. And then uh, now we're gonna import them into Lightroom Classic. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk through that here in just a second. And we're gonna edit these photos. And then after that, we're going to put these photos onto my uh, SSD drive. And then from there, we're going to uh, get onto the iPad and we're going to import them into LumaFusion. The LumaFusion is my video editor of choice. I've got Final Cut Pro. It's got such a steep learning curve. I am not good at it. So um, I, I'm still learning, but you know, LumaFusion is my video editor of choice right now. So uh, that, we're gonna put it into LumaFusion and, and create the time-lapse video. So uh, let's jump into Lightroom right now. Let's import these photos. And um, I've already got the card in, the, the card reader here. And I uh, got Lightroom open. Let's see, we're gonna go Canon. Okay, here, here's the photographs. We're gonna check all. And we're gonna click on Import. And then uh, Lightroom is going to do its thing. I've got an older i5 MacBook Pro, so it's going to take a little bit. Um, I'm still waiting till I still waiting till I can upgrade to an M1 or an M1 Pro or Max or something like that. But right now I'm working with a um, i7 or no an i5 machine with uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM. So. The, this is going to take a little bit, so I'll probably speed the video up to uh, get through this part.
probably can't hear it on the through the microphone, but uh, yeah, the fans in this thing are really starting to scream now. So yeah, the, the this MacBook hates me right now. The import the import is done. Uh, there's one. Let's scroll all the way down. 1638 that's what it shows so 1638 photos so let's uh, let's do some let's do some uh, editing of this and color color correction and color enhancements and then we'll go from there we'll go go to the very first picture the sun stayed out it was really sunny just some clouds drifting by above so it's not like the sun was going down or anything so the, the exposure should be pretty um, <clears throat> pretty uniform throughout uh, let's see here I wonder what some presets would look like I got I got Jared Poland's uh, three uh, fro pack presets let's let's look at some of those real quick that's acid wash, acid wash I use these a lot whenever I do um, portraits for people but usually whenever I, there's Skittles Skittles looks pretty good let's um let's see universal sold okay now okay there there's no correction that's what Skittles. I kind of like that. I'm just gonna miss and go go with that. Um, shout out to Jared Poland, Fro Pack One. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna tweak it just a little bit though. Let's see here. Saturation is good. The blue. I'll pull the blue up some, make the sky pop a little more. And I'm not gonna mess with the color wheels. Let's get down here to the um, primary colors. Okay, let's go blue saturation, pull all the way out. Okay, that's what it looks like right there. Let's pull it back up. We'll if we go all the way up. Uh, it's too much. Go about about plus thirty four. Play with the hue a little bit. And see what that does. Yeah, I don't like that. No, we don't want purple. We don't want a purple sky. Let's just put it. We're just gonna put it back to zero. Okay, the green primary. Might make the grass pop just a little bit more. Okay, that's. Plus a hundred, minus a hundred. Yeah, we'll we'll go plus twenty-five on that. What about the hue? Okay, that's not too bad. Let's go the other way. Right now that no, we don't want that. We'll go we'll go plus ten on that one. There we go. Red, I'm not gonna mess with. Um, I'm thinking that looks pretty good, right about where it's at, right there. The clouds, the the the, the, the clouds look really good right here. They're, they're bright and white. The sky is, you know, just enough blue that pops real good, and it's reflecting off of the water. And uh, the greens and the grass look good. I think I'm gonna go with that. Okay. Okay, now what you need to do is you need to take that first edit and you need to apply that edit to all the rest of the pictures. So uh, here's, here's how we do that. You're gonna click on the first one. You're gonna go up here and click on edit. We're gonna click on copy. You're gonna get copy settings and this shows everything as copying. And you hit you click on copy. Now, click back on edit. You click select all. 
Then you come down here to the um, lower right hand corner where it says sync. Click on sync. It's going to show that same box right there with those, all those edits. It says synchronize. So we're going to click on synchronize. It's going to take a minute. Still, still doing its thing. Again, this is not one of the faster M1 machines. This is a, the, I, the i5, so it takes a little while. Okay, now it is, uh, it, it is finished, looks like. So if I scroll through here, I'm scrolling through. Um, let's just grab this bar. We'll just pull this bar over to here. Oh, okay, it still hasn't, hasn't finished copying all the settings, so it's still working. Yeah, the the fans are still the fans are screaming at me. So yeah, it's still doing something. But let's click on photo number six hundred and twenty-one right here. Okay, yeah, the the colors look the same. It's just you know shadows and and clouds are you know different. Okay, let's scroll on over here to about to about a thousand. The, you know, right around 1,000. And uh, we'll click on photo 1,000. Same, same thing, photo 1,000. Colors are the same. Okay, so let's go all the way down to the very end. Wait on the computer to finish doing its thing. And Okay, there we are. We're click, click on the very last one. Same thing. The shadows have moved. The clouds have moved. The uh, the lake, the marina, the trees, all that are still in the same place they were. So, um, so all of the all of the colors and all of the photos have been corrected. Now, what we need to do is export these. I'm gonna export them to an SSD drive. That way, we can import them into the iPad. So to, to uh, here, here's what we gotta do to ex export them. Go up here to edit, click on select all. Now we're gonna click on file. Scroll down here to export, where it says export. Click on export. It's gonna bring up this box. Now, what we wanna do is choose Right here, we want to choose the location folder. Scroll down here and, and find here, here's my SSD. Okay, it's blank, I emptied it, I completely erased it today, so it's completely blank. We're gonna click on new folder. We're gonna name this um, Fort Gibson Lake Time Lapse. And then click on create. Now, now we're in the fold. Now we're in the folder that we want to save the the photos in. It's going to save to the SSD. We're going to click on choose. Now the the export folder has been selected. Um, all the rest of this is. It is where it needs to be. All we need to do now is just click on export. It's saying preparing to export. Again, since this is one of the slower computers, it's gonna take a little bit. So I may I may stop the recording while this exports. So we'll see how we'll see how fast it goes and I'll determine that. Wow, that that export took roughly two hours. So uh, <clears throat> yeah, 
you're gonna be doing these uh, time lapses like that, you've either gotta have a lot of patience or a lot of computer power. So, uh, because uh, they will they will challenge a slower processor. So, uh, anyhow, let's uh, check and make sure they're on the, uh, the drive. So we'll, uh, here, video SSD is, what is back up here? Fort Gibson Lake time lapse. And it looks like they are all there. So, the next step is going to eject this SSD, going to uh, hook it up to the iPad, and then uh, we will uh, begin doing the, uh, the creating the time lapse on the iPad and LumaFusion next. Okay, now we're back and we're on the iPad in uh, LumaFusion. I've got the, uh, the SSD connected to the, the USB port. And uh, now what we're going to need to do is click on linked folders that's gonna that's gonna show you everything that you've assigned to for LumaFusion to uh, communicate with to uh, you know for your files for, you know, for your files app um, video SSD is the particular one I'm gonna need so we're gonna click on video SSD Fort Gibson Lake time lapse, and there is all of the um, photos. So, what we're going to need to do is uh, first off, we're going to click on down in the bottom right hand corner where the little gear looking thing with the question mark. Click on, click on that. We're going to go to preferences first preferences maybe I'm wrong we're going to go to settings and on photo where it says photo look over to the right point zero one you want it to say point zero one that's how long that it's going to run each individual uh, photo so we're good there um, okay 9 by 16 portrait we want to change that to 16 by 9 landscape uh, 30 frames per second so we're good there and now we need to import these photos down into the um, to the the play the the editing area so over here in the in about the center of the the screen over to the far left there's a circle with a check mark in it we'll need to click on that and then right next to it is a circle with double check marks we'll need to click on that what that's going to do is highlight everything in that list and since there's you know over 1600 photos there it's taking it a minute to highlight them all but here in a second it will uh, it will highlight all of these photos just have to give it a second Okay, it's got all of them highlighted, and uh, as you can see, that took a while. Again, this this is the 2020 iPad, not the 2021 that has the M1 processor. And I don't think this was so much of a processor issue here as it was the uh, port that's on this particular iPad is just the stand the regular USB C port, and the uh, 2021 iPad, the M1 iPad has, it's a Thunderbolt port, which is a whole lot faster. And I think that's probably what it was, was just a, a speed issue through the port. But anyhow, they're they're all highlighted now. 
Now what we need to do is is um, touch those either I'm, I'm using an Apple Pencil touch those and drag them down to the timeline touch them with that or with your finger but either way touch them and drag them down right down here to the timeline just like so as you can see they are now loaded loaded in there um, it's solid white if you expand this out you'll see that it is all individual um, pictures right there so we want to back this up all the way to the beginning here now just to see what it looks like as it is we're going to hit play it's dropping some frames right now because it's just so much it's trying to push through it but you can kind of see whenever you know there's clouds above me or whatever but it's uh, it's going to be about a minute long time lapse We will let this play all the way through here. Okay, so fi 54 seconds is, is what this time lapse seems at being. Now, what we're going to do right now. We're going to export this as a video and then we're going to turn around and re-import it back in. So we're going to click on this little square down here with the arrow pointing up down in the bottom right hand corner. Click on movie. Okay, we want to save it back onto the SSD because um, of the storage issue. So we're going to click on linked folders. Okay, here's your export settings. We want to export this in the highest possible quality that this thing will do, which is going to be 4K. Go to video quality. We're going to choose ultra. Now we're going to click the, uh, the square that's in the top right hand corner of this little gray box with a square with the arrow pointed up we're going to click on that it's going to tell it to export now it's going to ask where we want to save it at so we're going to click on the folder with the plus arrow right next to it right there okay so we're going to um, is it Okay, now it's asking us where we want to save it at. So we're going to click on Link Folders. We're going to scroll down to we'll see Video SSD. Now it says for Gibson Time Lapse. We're going to click on that. Now, just to make it easy to find this, we're going to click on the folder with the plus on it right there new folder name need to name it we'll just say uh, video we can always come back and, and change that later okay now it's ready to, to upload so we're going to click on this uh, square with the arrow on it again that's going to write the movie And then it's going to take this a few minutes to render out as well. So uh, I'll speed the video up right here. Okay. Finally, it finished uh, uploading. And um, I'll just get past all that because it took uh, it took about 30 minutes for that to upload. But, uh, two reasons. There's a lot of really large-scale uh, large files in here. You know, 1,600 of them. 
and um, you know, this is not the newest and latest and greatest iPad. This is you know the previous, it's a 2020 generation, but it is what it is. Uh, upload is complete. Click on OK. Now we're going to we're going to now go to our files app. Video SSD for Gibson Lake time lapse. We're going to check and see if it's there. It's going to take a second to load. So let's uh, scroll down to the bottom here. There's the folder we created. My project. Let's click on that. Okay, now this is, we're going to re import this and look at it again. But uh, here's uh, we're not done with it yet. But it's, it looks pretty good. But we're not quite done with it. We're gonna we're gonna take it back in and and uh, do some more edits to it. But uh, I'm, I'm liking how it's looking so far. So now let's go back to LumaFusion. We're going to. Now go down, we're gonna start a new project. So we're gonna click on the bottom left hand button to, and then right next to it, we're going to where the box of the plusing and hit plus. Uh, I'm not gonna name it, it's just gonna be my project 16 and hit the plus button. Now, we need to import it. So we're gonna go back up and click on link to folders in the top right hand corner. It's on video SSD for Gibson Lake time lapse. It's going to take it a second. Now, here's a folder that says video. There's where our video is at. And there it is right there. Now we're going to click that, drag it right down here to the timeline. Switch that. I don't know why I went back to portrait, but we'll go back to landscape. Okay. Now instead of it being all individual photographs on here, this is a, a little bit smoother video, and then I can make global adjustments to it. And I click on the little pencil-looking thing to go into the um, adjustments folder. Click on the color adjustments. We're going to click on original. And uh, just do a couple of quick edits here. And uh, uh, let's see, we'll just kind of play with it a little bit. That looks good there. Not really needing a whole lot because we did, we made such good edits as they were raw, uh, raw photographs in uh, Lightroom. But uh, just a few few extra touches here, here and there, we're going to come down right there, uh, pull the highlights back just a little bit, and pull some contrast up, and I think that's going to be about it, let's take a look and see what that looks like. I think we'll call this good. So let's um, stop that. Now we're going to re-export it. Just like we did a while ago. Click on the export box. Click on movie. Click on linked, linked folders. Okay, now, now here's where we don't have to go quite as radical on our, on our saving it. Um, you can save it as 4K, um, and I'm going to actually save this twice. I'm going to save it as a 4K and as a 1080, but but uh, 4K, and if you're going to just upload it to the web or whatever, um, economy is really all you need to do. Look at your file size right here, right now. Space needed for export, 130 megabytes. That's on economy if you choose ultra. It jumps to 779 megabytes. So there's, that's a big difference. So if you drop back to economy, you could even go back to 1080 here 
and watch that 130.4 megabytes. Whenever I click on 1080, it goes down to 52. So, um, you know, your file size and your your uh, me- your your bit rate are, uh, you know, got a lot to do with how big the files are. But I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it like this right here. 4K economy at 25 megabits per second, and I'm gonna click on export. Okay. And then now it's asking for the folder, and it's already at the correct one because that was where I saved it at before. And uh, hit, and then I'm gonna hit save. Now this one's writing a whole lot faster because it's not near as much, uh, you know, raw information that it's trying to process. Okay, this is a pretty lengthy video and uh, uh, I hope it helped because uh, it took me a while to learn it and I had a lot of trial and error, but uh, I thought, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this video and kind of help, maybe help somebody else out. If it did help you, throw a like down there. Uh, consider subscribing, because I'll do more of these, you know, if, uh, if people need me to. But uh, it's really, it's not hard to do. Just uh, the first thing you gotta do is get your camera settings correct. You gotta leave it in photo mode, not video. Leave it in photo mode. And there, most cameras nowadays have a continuous shooting or a, a inter- interval shooting. You need to look for a, mine's a Canon camera and it's under interval shooting. I can't screen record or I would show you how to do it on, on uh, my screen. But uh, interval shooting, I set mine for one second and then set the, uh, the number of, uh, of photos to zero. And what that does, when you set it to zero, it means it's unlimited. That way it's just gonna keep on going until either your battery dies or you turn the camera off or your car gets full. And I put a 64 gigabyte card in and turned it on and just let it fill the car plumb full. So that's, it was, that's how I come up with 1,368 or whatever it was. So anyhow, it, that's not hard to do. It, it just, you know, you're gonna fill a car plumb full then you, uh, bring it into Lightroom or some photo editor, touch up the photos and uh, however you want them, uh, touch up the first one and copy those settings to the rest of them, export them and uh, into a video editor. In the video editor, bring them all in as photos and set them at 0.01 seconds each. And uh, uh, LumiFusion, I know it's pretty, it's really easy to, to set that up and bring them in like that. Uh, I don't know about Final Cut Pro or Premiere, or, I mean, I, I'm just not a pro with those, um, uh, at software. But bring it in there as photos, and then render it out at its highest quality, and after you render it out, bring it back in, now it's in a video format, and you can make some final touch-ups, and then you can export it in the, uh, the the file size you need, the resolution and file size you need to, you know, post it wherever you need, want to post it at. But, uh, excuse me. If you got any questions, hit me up in the comments and I'll do my best to try to explain it. But uh, anyhow, thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned because I may have some more tutorials coming up soon. Thanks for watching.